Thank you very much, Kevin. Let's get a quick look at the two team lists for today's game. Starting off with the London Towers, and the Towers come in today's game as third favourites for the competition and with half of the side that won the organisation's first ever trophy back in 1996. London are looking for a return to the final after missing out last year for the first time in four seasons. To the starting five, and Martin Henlon retains the starting spot he took from Neville Austin in our last game before Christmas. How, how the likes of Bucknell, Lewis and Bowman cope with the aggressive nature of the Derby backcourt will be decisive. To the Derby Storm and Martin Ford is still looking for one more English player to complete his lineup. In the meantime, he's been forced to lace up his boots once again and come out of retirement. To the starting five, Ray Schultz, who started the season with the Towers, starts against his former club and despite having struggled with injury of late, Bunton, Stone and Evans will be the key men for Derby here. We're ready to go then. It's quarter-final action in the Uniball Trophy. Martin Henlon will jump up against Cephas Bunton. And Bunton wins the tip to Evans. Evans lobs into Schultz. Schultz with the open score against his former team. Yeah, I know he's going to enjoy this one, uh, having uh, played for London Towers and being switched over to a, a, another good team, Derby. I think he's going to have a good time today, Schultz. Looking to come out and have a, a good game. How about Danny Lewis's new hairstyle? It's pretty impressive. We saw it just before <laughs> Christmas. London Towers here, favorites by five points with the bookies. Uh, Tim, you agree with that? Yeah, I think they're favorites. I think, though, that uh, they'll have to be at the top of the game as far as energy is concerned because, again, organized chaos is how uh, Dobby's playing. They're going to come at you. Handle with a nice post move. Gets the opening score of the night for the London Towers. Stone quickly down the court now for the Storm. Schultz. Schultz lines up the three now, going past Henlon. Bunton. In the corner is Carl Miller wow. for three. All twice. Really come out to play this season. Yeah, he? he really, really has. He's been a guy that's been out for years and years. He has young, so tremendous talent. Uh, sometimes maybe not lived up to it, but uh, this year really come out and done some, some interesting things on the court. Playing very well. Handler going strong to the basket, draws the foul from Ray Schultz, and I believe he'll go to the line. Here's a slow motion here. See, that's a that's a tough matchup. Uh, you know, Schultz is going at him on the other end because he has the quickness, and Martin's going at him vice versa because he has the strength and the bulk. They both are trying to get each other out of the game quickly. <laughs> Handler can get the free throw to go. Henlon has all three of the Towers points. It's the Towers three, the Storm five. Stone has Bunton in the low post, but opts for Schultz up high. Evans boasts in the headband, lobs into Miller. Schultz again fakes the three and goes past Henlon. Here is Evans. Evans along the baseline with a little motor has a look and then eventually drops. Martin Henlon's got himself uh, a tough task there because he can't dive out at him, but he can't leave him wide open. Yeah, he'll shoot either. the three shows, and then again, he's shown that he's quick enough to, against a, a, a pure five man to go by him because uh, he has a bit of athleticism. Bunton with the block, away comes Evans on the break, just lost the handle for a second, and good hands from Barry Bowman to uh, knock it loose. You know, all the guys out there are pretty quick and very agile as from their position point of view. Um, you know, all the, from one through four, and uh, excluding uh, Schultz, these guys really put on the floor, run the floor. Difficult team to match up to, because you have like Johnson against uh, 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 Bunton, that's a tough matchup for him. He's away from the core, he's way out on the top of the key, and uh, you know, obviously uh, Bunton go by him. Evans in the low post, guarded by Lewis. Good hands from Danny Lewis to knock it loose. Could only knock it out of bounds, though, and the Storm will get it back. Good reach in there from yeah, Danny Lewis. Yeah, Danny's doing a little work early because, you know, again, uh, Evans is a very good post-up player and that, uh, you know, not many guards can handle him down the post. The credit to Danny and his ability to play defense. No reset of the shot clock, so uh, Miller fires up a three. Schultz trying to save it, just ran out of bounds first and couldn't quite.
Derby coming with a little pressure up court as they like to do. Hanlon up in the high post trying to get it into Butler. Good hands to knock it loose. Bunton going for the block. Lewis got it over him. He'll get a few. <laughs> he's got a few this season for sure. Again, shows showing that he's quicker than Hanlon. Beats him down the court for an easy layup. It's going to be an interesting matchup that one. Ray Schultz with four points so far. Here's the latest score on the uh, lead pass from Stone. And that's the quickness factor there. Schultz can get up and down the court a little quicker than Martin. And, you know, give credit to Darby. They're looking for that. Ray Schultz converts the three-point play. He's the game's leading scorer on five. Lewis. Lewis. Going strong, feeds to uh, Johnson. Johnson up quick to lay it in off the glass. Stone to Schultz. In the low post is Evans. Good move from Darian Evans. Doesn't get the roll. Rebound though for Carl Miller. Bowman turned not it loose. I'm not sure Bowman even knew the ball was coming. Just threw his arm out. Mm, yeah, he did. Good, good, good reflex uh, defense. Battle of the boards is going to be key tonight, you know. I think that's really, really going to be uh, the area where the winner is going to, going, to, going, to, going to win out one of the battles in the war. Towers certainly have the uh, size, but plenty of athleticism on the Derby team. Towers running it back. Bowman for three. Too long on the shot, and there goes uh, Kip Stone with the rebound. Stone backing in, all the way Kip Stone to the basket is fouled by Danny Lewis and he'll go to the line. Again, Darby very good at, uh, you know, having pretty much anyone post you up in, is according to who they have the disadvantage at defensively. So, uh, you know, again, a lot of, lot of matchup problems I think that they can throw at, uh, at, at London. Stone. Makes them both. There's Martin Ford, dressed for the occasion, just in case his side needed. Here's Lewis. Then we'll have two players from the old school on the course, Steve Bucknell and <laughs> Martin Ford. <laughs> you might as well lace your boots up I and say, get out I there. I say that you. affectionately, you know, about Steve. <laughs> Steve, of course, a veteran player who... Uh, for the England team, played the NBA and played everywhere that uh, that matters. He's a great player and uh, great uh, statesman for basketball here in Britain. Been a bit quiet here in the opening four minutes. Shot short there, rebound by Bunton trying to feed inside. Good pass inside to the wide open Darian Evans. Hasn't touched the ball yet. Is uh, but here's a jump shot, pass down uh, to Evans from Stone. Bowman going all the way, trying to feed inside, ball loose on the floor. Ray Schultz Here's Schultz again, out. Dunk City. Oh yeah. Two-handed slam for Ray Schultz, and Dolby Storm have come out firing here. Yeah. They lead by seven. Again, you look at the energy again. They get it, they don't waste any time. They get down, they scouted this. They know that Henlon can't run with any of those guys. And I think that, uh, you know, again, Henlon's going to go at them on the other end, and he's going to attack them on the break. There come Dolby again, the pull-up. For Bunton, a long two for Cephas Bunton, and the Towers now trailing by nine. Five minutes into the uh, first quarter here, the London Towers nine, Derby Storm 18. Coach Ron, Ron Aberglen with a timeout. Let's go down and take a listen. They've scored every time down there. You can't jump in the air. Barry, Barry, you and Danny can't come down here and jump in the air and hope for something. Stay on the floor until you find something. Something good. You jump in the air here, and we're all we're doing is turning it over. All right. Nothing wrong with the offense. We just don't know. We don't have any defense. They've scored 18 points. They've scored every time on something down the court. That is a pathetic, pathetic defense. Come on. Get a little pride. Get down and play some defense. 
you let them do exactly what they want down here. He's every time down they do not totally exactly right scoring every time, but they've been pretty close to it, Dolby Storm. Yeah, and they give them some easy things. You know, you look at the dump down from Stone to Evans. You look at the two fast breaks by Schultz. I mean, those are points. Bass, you want them to at least earn it. They're going to get some baskets, make them earn it, and uh, and, and play some tough defense. Uh, on, on the on the other end, he's talking about them jumping in the air and, and just hoping to find somebody open. I think they're doing that because Bunton is such a great shot blocker. They know he's coming. They figure if they drop it down, they get a layup. Now, we've been talking about the experience of a man like Steve but no, I can't remember him actually touching the ball. I don't think he has at all. And I think, uh, you know, we saw them a week ago playing so well uh, on telly, and, and, and now they're not, they're not playing well together at all. Steve Button is a, is a veteran player, and, and you got to get him involved. Definitely. It's inside to Lewis. Lewis with a nice spin. Ah, Bunch him with exactly. another block. And, and that's what I mean. You know, they've been looking for him. They know he's a great. He's the best shot blocker in this league, without question. All right, as Bunton averages and he just four blocks elevates again. and throws it out. Danny Lewis for a long two. I was about to say, see if Bunton averages four blocks a game. No other team in the league averages that many. No other team. And he's got two so far here tonight. He's got the ability to average even more. Just tremendous shot block. The timing is, is and athleticism is everything for him. Stone with the penetration here. See who gets some. Yeah, Bowman coming down. The refs call that one. For Stone will go to the foul line, shooting two. Dolby were in action yesterday on Boxing Day, yeah. Jim. Is, is that a benefit? They run off the turkey yesterday and come out today? Or, well, or is it a hindrance because you're playing two in two days? I think it's, I think it's, a, it's a negation because of the fact that they'd be tired. But I think as well, because they lost, it's tough to, to, to play a, a good team like them after they've lost. They want to come back and prove a point. So it can work either way. But uh, it's not easy playing a game the night before a big game like this. Steve Button will get some assists to Donny Johnson on probably his first touch of the game. Absolutely. And he's got, you know, talking about the old school, Steve Button has got the, here's a, here's, a, here's a dump down to Johnson, goes up and dunks it. Look at the old school socks that uh, Button has on. How about that? <laughs> I haven't seen that before. That's how I wear my socks. <laughs> Bunton. Bunton looking to go work on Johnson. Does so with the jump shot too long. Here's the rebound Bowman. Here's Bucknell leading it. To Bowman on the trail. Bowman feeds Lewis. Lewis goes up. They're all worried about Bowman. They're all worried about Bunton. Every time they go to the buck, it's a dish off because he's he's uh he's like window lean. He's cleaning the glass in there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Schultz. Schultz too long on the jump shot. Miller fighting with Evans for it. Miller comes up with it. Here's Evans now. Schultz. Bunton wants it in the post. He has Lewis in front of him. They can't get it to him. Here's Evans in the corner shooting over Henley. Tough shot from Darian Evans. That's a tough shot. That's a tough shot. You got a you got a seven footer right in the face to shoot over him. That's a tough shot. Lewis in the corner. Thought about a three. Here's Johnson up top. Bowman has Henlon in the post. Lobs it into Henlon. Going up against Schultz again. Time ticking down on the offense. Henlon's got to go. Goes oh! But a goaltend says the referee at top, Keith Bowes, oh, 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 count the basket. What did you make of this, Jim? That's incredible. That's, yo, look at that, LeVay. That's a, his elbows. His, he, <laughs> his elbows go over the rim. It's incredible. Goaltend was called, though, so Hedlund got the two. He had to look. He put his head in the, in the rim. I always looked through it to see where the ball went. It's incredible. Blocked by Hedlund. Oh, what a oh. great play by Bunton to save it. Yeah, this guy is exciting. This guy is absolutely exciting. Here's Butler to Hedlund on the track. Johnson. Bunton going around. Johnson around to Butler. Butler lines it up. There's a Butler with the jump shot. We've had nine different scorers in the game so far. Barry Bowman, the only man so far yet to score of the two starting fights. Henlon knocks it loose, only as far as Evans. 
Bunton backing in. Evans. Evans with the jump shot, stretches the Derby lead back out to seven. Bowman going quick feeds, charging foul is called against Barry Bowman. Oh, oh, I don't know if he was set for that one. That's how you see that replay. Here it is, Jim. Oh, come on, handbags at five paces, I think. Come on, that's, he had his knee out there from, from that way. They, they, they tell us that they have to call it. Is you have to get you have to get that you have to get it straight on. You can't have that glancing type of foul. In a big game like this, you don't want to have fouls like that and get a quality player of the game. Never lost in checking into the game for the first time here tonight. Replacing Martin Handler goes to the bench with five points. So you can safely say that was a bad call. You can safely say. Yeah. I would say nothing against the referees. You know me, Jim. <laughs> Austin's first touch of the balls with his feet will reset the 30 seconds, and Dolby will get it from the side. Here's Neville, just showing he can kick the ball too. Oh, Neville played football. Bunton, Evans wants it in the post and gets it. Flips it around to Schultz on the far side is Miller. Bunton, Bunton under pressure from Johnson's jump shot won't go. Good work from Schultz on the offensive glass. Bunton spinning in, Schultz has it in the corner now. Lobbed in, triple team has to force back out. Miller. Miller oh! 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 Showtime! <laughs> the Dolby fans like oh. that one. You gotta love this guy. It's like four exciting plays already he's given us. Austin he's got to have his own highlight uh, plays when he's into the, the game. Button will go in strong to the baseline, fouled by Evans. Here's another look. Evans just not quite there in time as Button went along the baseline. That was consistent to what I was saying the last call. Uh, the guy wasn't there completely and it shouldn't be called a foul. Austin with the double pump inside. Jarrell Bowman during that break there with the ball just coming into the game for Derby. Stone fires up for three on the buzzer off the back of the ring, but it won't go. The highlights have come from Cephas Bunton here in the first quarter. And his side lead the London Towers by 21 points to 28. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to uh, the NEC where the London Towers trailed the Derby Storm 28 to 21 in the Uniball Trophy quarterfinal. With me, the Edinburgh coach, Jim Brandon. We're going to take a look at the match facts from that first quarter. And uh, the shooting percentage has been brilliant by both teams. Yeah, incredible. I mean, uh, the things are going up. But I tell you what, you know, Derby's, because they get a lot of easy shots. I think what the coach said on the timeout, the three points aren't going down particularly well. Uh, with two point shots certainly keep them in there. Free throws. Uh, London's not getting to the foul line enough, I think. And if we take a look at the uh, next page, at the rebounding, Dolby being aggressive on the boards, as you would expect at the as, offensive end. Uh, as they do, and, and, and uh, I think that's going to be key. Surprised that London's turned the ball over more than they have, because you know, I think that they have more veteran players in the, in the guard position. And if we look at the lead leadometer, it's been the uh, Dolby's lead from start to finish here in this opening period. We're ready to go now for period number two. It'll be Neville Austin and Cephas Bunton to jump it up. Austin wins the tip. Lewis. Lewis going strong to the basket on his own. Danny Lewis with the opening score here on period number two and trims the gap to five. Bowman, Jarrell Bowman, that is. Stone. Jarrell Bowman. Bowman going to the finger roll. Fresh into the game with an easy lay. Yeah, nice little player, this uh, Bowman. I played uh, one of his first games against us uh, a couple of weeks ago and really hits the outside shot as well as goes to the bucket. Oh, oh what a block oh. by Bowman. Make that block <laughs> number three. Goes for the dunk, though. 
foul is on Neville Austin as uh, he tried to get the defensive position. Those, boys, those guys were up. They were up. They elevated there. This is oh, just incredible, the other man, what just happened. Foul number one on Neville Austin. Foul pull on Donnie Johnson, I believe. He certainly looked surprised that it was on him. Here's another look, uh, Jim. Top of your screen, number 14, yellow, just... Hmm. Lucky for him, was a, it would have been a turnover had not been in a fast break the other way. Bowman. Stone lobbing into Miller in the post. Miller looking to back in on Austin. Kip Stone has it back. Deep. London tightening up the defense now. Jarrell Bowman under pressure on the jump shot. Austin lost it. Bucknell came up with it. Bucknell running it back. London got some advantage on the break. Good kick. Bowman back to Bucknell. Johnson on the baseline. Austin at the foul line. Hands over to Lewis. Lewis going strong under pressure. Tough shot from Danny Lewis and he gets the roll. Tough shot, tough shot, tough shot. There's the uh, Sheffield Sharks players, Todd Cawthorn in the center of your screen. Don't forget, still to come tonight, we've got the Sharks against the Newcastle Eagles as Ray Schultz dunks Derby Storm into a seven-point lead. That was, the, that was the bomb squad behind him as well, Ian McKinney, Michael Payne. Steve Bucknell lines up the three. That's short. Rebound, Paul Miller. This, of course, the first half of our Christmas doubleheader special here at the NEC Arena. Oh, trying to slam it back, just couldn't. <laughs> Bucknell back in spinning. Beautiful move. What a beautiful move that was. What a piece of a move that was. This is an exciting game. Really, really some good stuff we've seen here. And just uh, the creativity in it and, and the athleticism that we're seeing in this game is uh, very, very exciting. I'm sure everyone's enjoying it at home as well as here. Schultz trying to lob it inside. Barry Bowman broke it up. Johnson. Johnson going through the middle is fouled by Jarrell Bowman. Not really a bad, I mean, you, you see John Johnson, again, a great uh, finisher, uh, dunks the ball every time he gets a chance. Maybe a good foul because he's not a great free throw shooter. You say politely as he shoots below 40%. We'll go down to uh, Martin Ford's timeout. He's seen side lead by five. Yep. Let's get ball reversal. Get people open. We've got to penetrate on the wings into these gaps. Okay? Penetrate pitch. Let's make it a good pass. Don't penetrate this fucking flick it somewhere. Okay? Yeah, make it a good pass. Go. Martin Ford not happy with the uh, offense his team's playing in there. They're just penetrating and flicking it up, as he said. Yeah, I mean, they were getting a lot of things uh, before. I think London's really just, uh, stepped up with the defense, and he, he's looking for some penetration and, and then maybe some dump downs, a, a good finish, and not really uh, focusing on the finish to get it. Uh, we're getting some open shots as well, maybe some penetration and kick. Uh, I think he's looking for. Now everybody's talked about the style of, uh, of Derby's play, but they've been quite happy to go into the half-court offense here in the opening 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you know, they play, again, they played a game last night, maybe, uh, you know, being smart, not going uh, completely all out uh, right now, but I think when, when it gets to nitty-gritty and London steps up, Derby's going to have to play the way they normally play in order to win this game. We were talking about Donny Johnson's free throw shooting. He won't have to go to the line because it was uh, before the shot. Lewis inside. He will go to the line. He's fouled and will go for a three-point play. Talking about athleticism, I mean, uh, London uses uh, Danny Lewis, just throws it up. He's such a great athlete. He just goes up. Good finish. Look at that jumping ability. Bang. Knocks it down.
Derby Storm led by nine at the end of the first quarter. Their lead has been trimmed by to uh, just two. Double team pressure under Bowman, triple team in the end, he somehow got it to Schultz. Miller fires up the three, way oh. too long off the board, rebound Stone. Oh, oh that was an easy slam. one. He did, that, was the, that was just a slam, it wasn't a monster slam. Was, the ghouls didn't come out on that one. <laughs> Sean Foot running the point now for the Towers. Lobbed in towards Bucknell, broken up by Miller. The Towers will uh, get it back. Steve Bucknell's doing a great job in posting up uh, Carl Miller down low, but uh, Carl Miller, on the other hand, is one of the best defensive uh, uh, you know, British players in the league, and I think uh, it's, a, it's a nice little, little, little clash of titans there, I think, down low. Hanlon came in for Austin and uh, quickly picked up the loose ball to hand over to Foot. Johnson. Johnson pulls up for the jump shot and trims it back down to two. That's what makes Donnie Johnson tough. I mean, you know, everyone knows he goes to the bucket, but every now and then he'll pull up and keep you honest with a nice little jump shot, which you're not expecting. Who do you think he's trying to get to the bucket so much? Stone. All the way around to the near side, and Schultz lines up the three. Oh, no! Bunsen going up, couldn't get it to go. <laughs> Last touch by uh, Cole Miller. That was incredible. Oh my goodness. There you go, Jim. That was incredible. If he had dunked this one, oh. Just couldn't quite get the I timing know. right. Absolutely. Kevin Cato tells me he used to jump like that. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm still asking him for the tape, you know. <laughs> I'm looking for the footage. <laughs> Johnson going for the layup. Couldn't get the lay in to go. Chasing down his own boards, fighting his own man off. Saves it to Lewis. Foul was called on Jarrell Bowman. Foul number two on him. Danny going baseline. Danny Lewis going baseline and uh, get the foul on the outside. So his hand checking. Coaches don't mind that as long as they stay consistent with that call throughout the match. Checking into the game for the first time tonight. The Storm's veteran shooter Tim Lascelles. He comes in for Jarrell Bowman. Just uh, passed the 400 league game milestone a few weeks ago. Tim Lascelles and all 400 games for the Derby Storm. But no. The lead to... Oh, oh. Bunting couldn't get it to go. The foul was on Henlon. <laughs> This guy's the human highlight film, Punton. He's incredible with some of the things he's doing out here. He's getting the ball to just, look at this. Just throw it up, he goes and gets it, you know? If it gets stuck up in the lights, I think he might go and get one of those too, you know? <laughs> Barry Bowman will check in now for Danny Lewis. He'll go to the bench. That foul number two on Martin Henry. Lewis is the game's leading scorer with 13, the only man in double figures. The cells. Miller backing in on him. Carl Miller stumbling his way through. Bunting. Again, Dolby ticking time down on their offense here. Now they've got to get a shot up. Oh, bad pass. Good, good pass if they hit it. Lascelles couldn't get the shot to go as he did have to pick the ball up from his ankles. So important to the kids at home watching basketball. You have to deliver the pass to the shooter where he can catch and shoot immediately. You don't want to break his concentration or, or get him out of position by throwing, throwing a bad pass. But lines up the three, doesn't go. Henlon, Henlon going strong, doesn't get that one to go either. Oh, oh, it's a <laughs> oh man, how many dunks does he have? <laughs> He's got ten points so far. I just want to see the highlights on him alone at halftime. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure he'll feature heavily. <laughs> foot. Henlon trying to free up Bucknell and there was a foul there on 
Carl right. Miller just grabbing hold of Buckner to stop him going down the street. One of those titans down that we were talking about earlier. Carl Miller from Manchester, England, hometown. Legendary down in the city of Manchester, the inner city is known as Omar. His, 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 his AKA name down there. You know why? I, I don't know. <laughs> Baffled off the ball, the two number 12s fighting for it. It was uh, Blue 12, Ray Schultz, who was whistled for the foul. Foul number two on him. There's the pair of them in the middle of the screen. Just throwing him to the ground. <laughs> I think that's that's an extension from uh, what practice used to be like when yeah. you're down at London. That's something that goes beyond this game, I think. <laughs> Here's Hendler at the foul line then. It's a question for Sue uh, uh, at the end of the game uh, to see if she can find out what's, what, what was it like in practice between those two guys. Hanlon short on the second. Oh, great play by Lewis. Just couldn't flick it back in. Bunton. Still Bunton gets it back to uh, Stone. Schultz. In the corner is Lascelles. Lascelles giving some space. Lines up a three. Tim Lascelles. He, he's a good shooter. He was surprised that he knocks that down. Don't don't remember him when he used to fill it up in the old days. He's got to shoot. Well, the Storm have had uh, all of their players who have seen some action so far, all seven of them, on the score sheet so far. Henlon fighting for it. Two attempts doesn't go. Johnson says, let me try inside. Henlon with the tip. Eventually gets the score. Those are the plays that, to beat Darby, you got to complete. You, they can't beat with the loose balls in the first, and you don't. But that, that's the part of the game, you know? Look at that shot block that uh, Buckley just missed. Incredible. Henlon stayed with it. Johnson helped him, and they got that bucket. That's what they need. Work on the offensive rebound. You can see towers it's it very even both ways. That's right. Trying to pad the stats, we always say. But no. To Bowman. He'll back it out. Wait for Henwood to cross the line. Johnson inside. Johnson for the uh, runner. Two minutes to go here in the second quarter. The Dolby Steam Storm lead by two. Lascelles lines up another three, not this one. Rebound Bucknell. Bucknell has it ripped away, not quite ripped away, because Schultz will wrap him up for a jump ball. Bucknell and Schultz will jump it up. Bucknell wins the tip to Johnson, away come. Lewis, Lewis. Lewis going strong, nice work from Danny Lewis with the uh, blocking machine Bunton in his way, still managed to get his way to the basket. Yeah, and the learning tip for the for the players, young players at home, that's the way to go out of shot block and take it all the way to him. The more room he gets uh, away from you in the shot, the easier it's for him to block the shot. Danny Lewis took it right to his chest, took away his spacing and uh, finished it. Tied at 39. Miller. Nice little move there, didn't finish it well. Handler going after it. Lewis. Towers come forward now with a minute to go here in the first half, looking for their first lead of the ball game. Dobby looking a little jaded. I mean, they, you know, they, uh, yeah, I, I, I think maybe, you know, they need to uh, get a little breather. Played yesterday. The London Towers have their first lead of the game off the score from Steve Butler. 41 39. We're inside the final minute of the first half. Towers with eight straight points to, re uh, to gain the lead. Stone for three off the back of the ring. Hedlund going out. Wow, with bad the foul, bad, bad. Frustration foul that one. Fatigue play, foul perhaps. Carl Miller, the big just veteran. The, the shot goes up and Miller going after the rebound just slaps him across the back. Yeah. Hanlon will make the long walk to the other end, to the foul line, where he's been one for two on two occasions tonight. Ooh. And the 
best she can be is one for two on three occasions if he makes this one. And he is. The Derby Storm will run it back. Just a couple of seconds difference between shot and game clock. Timber Sales will slow it down for Derby. Schultz in the corner. Oh, in and out for Ray Schultz. Out. Rebound Danny Lewis. Incredible. Dolby not scored for the best part of three minutes here to end this first half. Buckner with the three. Up a three oh. short. Oh. Touch Bunton last. And with uh, a couple of seconds left. Alley to somebody. Probably Lewis in the middle of the key. Ball set to Bowman. Fires up. Doesn't go. <laughs> Who's on the clock? <laughs> well, Danny Lewis has been the man here in this first half for the London Towers. He's the leading scorer with 15. They lead by three. A game full of action, especially by that guy there, Cephas Bunny. Let's stay with us. Halftime is 42 39 to the tower. It's the first game of our doubleheader. The Towers lead the storm 42 39. Back to Jimmy and Daniel. Thank you very much, Kevin. Yes, we're ready to go here for the uh, second half as the London Towers take the court. Derby Storm already there. And it will be Martin Henlon who will jump it up against Cephas Bunton. Henlon wins the tip in the second attempt. Danny Lewis knocks it loose and comes all the way back to Barry Bowman. Towers will have the first offense of the second half. Evans playing the aggressive defense. Yeah, Darby's come back out with the energy as we talked about the, the trademark and, uh, you know, see how much of an effect it has on London's offense. Johnson in the corner, rebound Henlon with the easy stick back. Yeah, we talked about that, uh, the, uh, the the advantage in the rebounding by, by London. A lot of it coming from Henlon, doing a great job in there, but somebody's got to go drop down weak side and help them on the boards. Uh, they had the guy who wanted to shoot the shot, but, you know, they got to box out the rebounder. Evans penetrating through. Darian Evans with the uh, floater. <laughs> You're being kind. <laughs> He's into double figures now with 10. Johnson trying to lob it into Bucknell, finds him. Bunton going for the block and landed on Steve Bucknell. I think the last time I saw a shot like that, it was in a shot put competition. <laughs> Here you go. Here's Bunton coming for the block. Oof. Oh, gosh. Oh, it my helps goodness. if there's a shot there to block oh. first, don't it? Oh. Lewis inside, there's Bunton going for the block again, gets it. Lewis going up, Bunton again for the block. Oh, how many has he got? Six, to be 20 blocks today. They're trying to go around this zone and not getting much penetration. They're going to have to go inside sooner or later, maybe a pass to the post, the post is trying to go around the outside. Evans, to Miller. Stone, time ticking out on the Derby offense, inside to Evans, got to shoot, does, short, rebound Henry. Bucknell has uh, Lewis ahead of him, couldn't quite find him, here's Johnson to Bowman, Bowman to Lewis. Oh, he pulls it out, the Bunton standing there. That's a sign of respect, when you're a great shot blocker, they back it out after those layups uh, when they know you're around. Lewis, inside to Henry. Hanlon, down to three, got a shoot. Johnson didn't get it off in time, a 30-second violation by the London Towers. And Martin Ford being smart, matching uh, Bunton up against uh, uh, Johnson, knowing he's not a great outside threat, so they can sag in the middle and get all those block shots. So good job by the coach. A lot of what a shot blocker brings is just intimidation factor. It's not necessarily, as Henlon gets a block inside, Absolutely. it's not necessarily how many shots you block, it's how many you put off. You're making players think about this shot, and of course, if you do that enough, that maybe they don't, you know, because a lot of these skilled shots are a touch and concentration. You throw them off, maybe they'll miss it. Ray Schultz whistled for the foul there. Number three on him. Here's another look as Bowman fed to Bucknell. 
Schultz with a little swipe across his head. Bucknell makes the first. Veteran referee Keith Bruce out there enjoying himself, having a few laughs. He's not supposed to have fun. <laughs> That's not allowed as a referee. <laughs> Here comes Kip Stone for the Derby Storm, penetrating through the middle feed. Schultz, Schultz goes up strong with Buckner in attendance. And that's what they need against that, that zone. They need to penetrate in some kind of way, either by dribbling penetration and or, you know, uh, uh, passing down inside so they can get some, uh, some inside play there. Johnson with the lane at the other end, extends the towers and lead back out to five. Bunton. Evans, Evans along the baseline, fires up, rebound Johnson. Away come the towers again with Bowman against Schultz. Bowman pulls up for the jump shot. Oh, somehow it ends up in the hands of Bucknell. Who oh! Hurt either. He won't miss many of those. Stones. Evans blocked oh. by Henlon. Henlon getting some block shots in there. I think we should say who has the most block shots is going to win the game today. <laughs> Johnson feeds out to Bucknell. Lewis. Danny Lewis feeds to Bowman. Bowman to Bucknell. Bucknell goes up strong. Wow. And the Towers lead is now up to seven. Steve, Steve Bucknell is stunned that there was no foul called on that play. I mean, Here's another look. Butner wanted the foul for that. And he's got a decent case, it must he's got be a, you, Oh, we got a decent case out of Danny. <laughs> that means the referee must have blown the call. <laughs> That's the fourth uh, towel player now, Steve Butner, to get into double figures. They still have the game-leading scorer, Danny Lewis, who has the ball now, but is yet to score in this half. Lewis pulls up for three, and on cue, hits his first basket of the second half. Three pointer all of a sudden up by up by 10 London and uh, Derby just making a lot of turnovers. The biggest lead of the game uh, so far. Evans. Evans is shot. He's shot. Oh, another good rebound and stick back from Cephas Bunton. <laughs> There's putbacks and then there's putbacks. That was a putback. Oh. Bowman just organizing things at the top. Hands over to Brian Balser. Bowman pulls up for three off the back of the ring. Lewis diving on the floor with it. We'll take a jump ball between Evans and Lewis. And a few words exchanged between the two. Yeah, he said, did you have a good Christmas, Danny? I mean, you know, <laughs> good to see you, pal. Did you have custard or ice cream with your pudding? <laughs> <laughs> where did you uh, where'd you get your head on? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not that it would help Darren Evans as he is, uh, has the same hairstyle as you. Yes, he does. You? Yes, he does. <laughs> Bunton flips round to Stone. Stone going strong, doesn't get the roll. One piece, somehow staying on the baseline. How did he stay in? Incredible. Immense balance, Evans. Inside to Schultz. Schultz going oh. strong, doesn't go, rebound Henry. Just a reminder that uh, earlier on today, the uh, Thames Valley Tigers beat the London Leopards by... Oh! oh the ball. The ball. I by, uh, hey, I caught the ball over here. <laughs> 84 points to 91 was the score in that earlier game. Thames Valley Tigers uh, are awaiting the winner of this game for their uh, semi-final matchup. And in the second quarterfinal, the Manchester Giants beat the Chester Jets, but only just 83-82. They will play the winner of our next game. Coming uh, up after this one, Sheffield against Newcastle. Sheffield, Newcastle coming up immediately, well, a few minutes after the end of this game. Stone to Schultz. On the trail is uh, Miller. 
Now to bunt on the right. Can he hit three? Oh, he hits a three. Oh, he's going to be selling popcorn out the, <laughs> in the hallway soon. Penetration by Miller kicks back out the button. He knocks down the three. We thought he couldn't do it. Bang. And, uh, and I've been waiting for this moment when Martin Ford says the words that sub is I'm going in. <laughs> Foul there on Darren Evans as Bowman goes to the basket. Now, now there's old school and then there's old school. This is Martin Ford checking into the game for Ray Schultz. He has played uh, a couple of games this season. So it's not his first action of the year, but uh, I'm sure he would be much happier not being out there. Well, he's got he's got one red sock and one 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 white sock on. Uh, everyone over 35 years of age is rooting for Martin, irrespective of what uh, side of the <laughs> fanfare they're standing on. It's actually a knee brace that he pulls up over his knee. Right. He has had knee problems throughout his career. At one stage, he had a huge uh, brace around his knees, down just a little uh, strap. Now, <laughs> whoever Ford guards is indication of who they think. Uh, is not the threat on the other team. <laughs> the other team. <laughs> you know what the scouting reports are if he guards you. <laughs> foul called as uh, Miller picked up the loose ball. The foul's on Neville Austin. Good penetration. <laughs> They're fouling him early before he gets to the basket, not to be embarrassed. Uh, Carl Miller with the good hands and puts it back up. Miller's shot has a thing, eventually drops. He's got four points so far tonight. That one had a thing and didn't drop. Lewis. It appears that uh, Big Martin Ford is going out to Martin Henry. <laughs> oh! Now Ford going against Luce. Luce gets the better of him. It was a uh, trap. And he makes it turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> Martin's enjoying getting back into play. He's taking the bumps and bruises. He's got a bit of a black eye as well. You know, he, he, he uh, got a shot in one of the last games, and he says he's loving it. Here is Ford on the ball. Round to Bunton. Ford wanting it in the low post. Here he is. Flips round to Stone. Stone going strong. Oh, too nice strong. Move. Rebound Miller. Ford in there fighting for it. Last Makes a touch. John Potter. It'll be a derby ball. The one thing being the coach is it makes it a lot easier to call the plays once you're on the court with the other guys it than does. it does at the other end of the floor. Bunton. Kip Stone for a long two, doesn't go. Rebound Martin Henlin, away oh, comes Danny Lewis, break. all on his own. But he just couldn't quite catch up with the ball, and the fast break uh, disappeared. Yeah, evaporated quickly with Darby. They're such an athletic team, they'll get back very quickly. Oh, Henlin, Evan Austin, sorry, misses the easy one inside. Evans lost it from behind his back. And whilst Martin Ford's on court, the co court Tim Lascelles has taken over the uh, coaching duties. He is his assistant this year. And he's uh, calling the plays and helping out. There's Martin Ford just uh, there letting he them know what they're doing. <laughs> Donning the black and blue eye. Oh, Johnson. Just look a little tired. Uh, sorry for cutting you off. Look a little tired, Darby. Those are the plays they normally come with. That's what they normally do. Get oh, the Evans throws it away. Johnson gets it back to Henlon. Henlon under pressure is fouled and will go to the line. Cole Miller fouled number three. The third player on Darby uh, roster to pick up three fouls. And 
as Martin Ford has shown by being forced to lace up his shoes. They don't go too deep, so they can't afford to uh, get into too much foul trouble, Jim. Yeah, but, you know, in saying that, they have a couple of veterans come off the bench. Tim LaSalle's hit a, hit a bucket. He's, you know, when they go to the zone, he's the guy they're going to expect to come out and hit. And then they have Martin Ford who can come on and do a little something. They've maybe passed their sales date, but the guys are still eatable. <laughs> <laughs> Hanlon at the line. He's one for two on every trip so far tonight. Not here, though. He's 0 for two here. Ford with the rebound. Got a rebound. See him fill the lanes there. Stolen away by Danny Lewis, but Evans trying to get it right back. Lewis saves it to Potter. Three on none. Potter has Johnson ahead. Johnson goes up for the slam and is fouled by Kip Stone. Just a little, uh, I was expecting a better finish there uh, from Johnson. Johnson off the backboard. He is one of the uh, poorer free throw shooters in the league. He averages 38% um, from the foul line. It's gone up. <laughs> Johnson misses oh! the Mon Ford with skies, the rebound. Skies, skies. The London Towers have that. not scored from the floor in the last four minutes. Just can't get one to go, and yet they still lead by six. Here's a three-on-two break. Lewis to Potter in the corner for three. Too long on the jump shot. Still the Towers can't get one to go. London Towers shooters, Balser, Potter, these guys have to come in and hit shots. I mean, that's what they're on the team for. And, uh, you know, if they can knock down those shots, they'd be double figures right now as far as the league is concerned. Miller inside, nice spin move from Carl Miller, trims the gap, back to four, that's stolen the, away by Evans. That's what they're so good at, And Darby. keeps it alive, great play by Darian Evans. And the Storm with a chance for the uh, final offense here of the third quarter. I think they're going to hold for one shot, just to get it down a little closer. They're within four, two or one will do great for them. Here's the points by quarter. You can see it was in the second period that the uh, London Towers gained the advantage, but very low scoring here in the third, 13-12. Bunton, the three for Stone is short, rebound Lewis, he's got to get it off, couldn't get it off in time. And Danny Lewis is still the leading scorer in the game with 18. The London Towers lead this uh, quarterfinal by four. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the NEC Arena. The London Towers lead the Derby Storm by four here at the end of the third quarter. In the house here tonight, we've got fans from all eight teams here. They've all turned out. Christmas uh, obviously wasn't enough. They needed their basketball fix and uh, have come out in force here at the NEC Arena. Let's take a look at the Max Batch. It's Jim Brandon and the Towers still shooting the ball above 50%. Yeah, they are, but, um, you know, the uh, three-point shooting that they've, they've taken more is not going down for them, so it's starting to balance out a little bit. If we flip over onto the next page and have a look at the rebounding, the tower's doing a very good job at both ends of the floor on the glass. Yeah, they are. They, they, you know, Martin Hill is a key uh, part of that, really going to the boards and, and, and doing a great job. But uh, something we did, did look at a second ago is the free-throw shooting by London is letting them down. I think they're 8 for 15. All right, we're ready here to go then with the fourth quarter. It's Martin Henlon, as Jim said, doing a great job. 11 points, 11 rebounds on a double-double so far against Cephas Bunton. Bunton wins the uh, jump ball, and the Storm will get a chance to uh, trim this lead yet further. Bunton loses it, though. Can he keep it? Just keeps it inside his own half. It's four. Evans jump shot doesn't go. Oh! Stick back, not quite. Miller with another attempt. Miller eventually trims it to three, two. Hey, Martin Ford's looking good. I just signed him up. Ball not loose, it will still be a Towers uh, possession. Steve Button on Neville Austin will come in. John Potter and Martin Henlon will go down. 
Yeah, something I was saying a bit earlier, you know, it, it's very important for the shooters come off the bench, i.e. Balsa and Potter, they got to hit their shots and open things up for them. I mean, it'll help not have a buck in the back, he's also a great three point shooter. But uh, got to hit the open shots. Got to shoot it, don't get the shot off. Nobody sees the shot clock in time. I don't think that was off in time. The referee will now go to the table and just confirm it. But I'm pretty sure that shot was uh, long so after the uh, shot clock they make a signal expired. Well, they have to decide. OK, we've got a 30. Let's go. Tap Did of the shoulder, 30-second violation. Good defense, second time tonight the Storm have forced the Towers into a 30-second violation. And that's what they do. They, they, they get certain points of the game where they really outscramble you and just hustle and organize chaos, as we said at the, the, the top of the show. Stone for three doesn't go. Ball loose on the floor. Lewis has it. Lewis pulls it away from court. Danny Lewis running. Feeds never lost. And Austin going up strong. Doesn't go. The tip from Bowman does. And after six missed shots in a row, Towers finally get one to go. Yeah, and a lot of them were layups, too. And Austin, I think, had two of them. He's got to finish those as a big fellow. you got to finish those as a veteran as well. Donnie Johnson collapsing there on Cephas Bunton. Fell on his legs. I don't want to see that. I want to see a couple more dunks. Bunton slow to his feet here. Looked like a clash of knees as they went down, or perhaps a knee into the thigh. Here's another uh, look on the replay. Just watch the knees here of the two. Oh, right on the thigh. Right Probably on the has a dead yeah. leg. Yeah. Yeah, if that's possible for him. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a guy that uh, Dobby can afford to go to the bench, though, no. as we've said so often. Not at all. Uh, they may have to give him a breather, action because he's played uh, heavy minutes, but I think uh, certainly he, he's, he's, he's just created a lot of different things and uh, things for London to think about both in the court. Ray Schultz coming into the game during the break for Cole Miller. Stone, his button seems to be uh, pretty much recovered. Evans. Evans with the rearranged shot, tough shot, draws the foul from Neville Austin and will go to line for two. He in particular, Evans, is a little bit lackluster. You can tell maybe a little bit tired from last because he's a very exuberant type of player. He gets, you know, the dancing and, and all that kind of stuff and, he, and the team just feeds off of it. Not, not as... Uh, as uh, uh, effervescent, should I say, as he normally is. Carl Miller, Carl Miller uh, walked on the court there to come in and uh, then ran back. I can only assume it was when he got level to Martin Ford that he turned around, that Ford said, nah, -uh, turn around, go back, I'm enjoying this. I know, this is the great, I should lace up again, that'll be nice. I'm not coming off. <laughs> There's uh, two old veterans of the uh, British game having a chat there, Steve Button on Martin Ford. <laughs> Rebound never lost in there off the miss free throw. Towers lead this quarterfinal by three. Thames Valley await in the semi-final. This is the first of our Christmas special doubleheader. Still to come, we've got Sheffield and Newcastle. Bowman going through the middle, loses it. Evans with it now. Evans on the three-on-two break with Schultz. Schultz goes up. Evans with the rebound, stick back and trims the gap down to just one. And that's Darby basketball, hustling, scrapping, getting some breaks and easy buckets. Won't out-shoot you, you know, won't necessarily out-execute you, but certainly uh, will out-hustle you if you don't... Uh, Another uh, block oh. for Bunton. Grabs his own board as well. Danny Lewis almost get the steal. Evans managed to keep it alive for the storm. Oh! Austin going strong with the rebound. Stolen away by Darian Evans. Stone going up strong. Schultz with the tip. And the Derby Storm all that's back they, in front. And that's what they do. Look how they just hustle and, and it's chaos and it's defense. They get steals and, you know, Danny Lewis steals and they steal it right back from him. And that's, that's Derby at their best. Storm's first lead since the second period. It, it, it ain't pretty, but they're winning. A 7-2 start here to the final period. Lewis goes! Oh! Block for Cephas Bunton. Oh, 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 oh! Oh, oh, oh it hit the <laughs> ring. Away come the towers with uh, Lewis. Lewis going strong. Lewis 
doesn't get the basket to roll, but the foul was called on Ray Schultz, and that is foul number four. That was going to be a serious dunk. <laughs> Smart kids at home. Look at Danny Lewis. Goes to the basket. Knows the taller player is on him. Go instead of showing him the ball, gets the body contact first and tries to complete the end one. And that's the way to do it. Martin Dunk. Ford now getting himself a, a well-earned drink there as he goes to the bench. <laughs> Three boards uh, out there. I wonder what's in that bottle. Might be some Jerry's <laughs> <laughs> <There's> Something. <laughs> bit of Christmas spirit, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Danny Lewis can't get the Towers back in the lead. We're level at 58 with six and a half here to go in the fourth quarter. Stone round to Evans. Kip Stone. Miller wants it inside. Goes Good. to Schultz. Oh, Schultz goes, goes up. Austin with the block. Kip Stone claiming that that was a goaltend as Austin's hand came through the basket. Referee says no. Foul number four now on Neville Austin. Here's another look at it, Jim. I'm not sure that Kip Stone didn't have an argument there. Yeah, it looks like he did go through, and Neville's not having a great game. Uh, certainly, uh, it would expect him with experience, so when, Neville, when Martin Hinland goes out to have the same sort of presence, was definitely not there today. Hinland checking back in now for Neville Austin. There's Martin Hinland. Ray Schultz now the joint leading scorer on the Derby Storm team. 15 points for him. You would, uh, you'd know he's playing against his old team. Oh and yeah, things like that. He's enjoying this definitely. The alley oop to Johnson, all oh, broken up by Cephas Bunton, illegally so, and the foul was called against him. That was going to be a serious dunk had he not fouled him. <laughs> Caught that while we're there. Look at those guys. Look at those guys. I don't know. I don't quite think Kevin could jump uh, that high before Kevin Cato. <laughs> Donnie Johnson already shown us his prowess at the foul line tonight. That's miss number three. Well, you say it was 38 when we started, so it must be at least a 36 by now. <laughs> it's dropping it fast. <laughs> And he gets one to go, so he's 25% on the evening. Stone, Evans. Evans going strong, gets the roll, and the Derby Storm lead is up to three. It's getting interesting. I mean, now is when London's got to start addressing, uh, you know, their experience and, 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 and uh, haven't been there before. Danny Lewis is fouled underneath as he rebounded. Uh, Steve Bucknell's miss. It's on Carl Miller, and that is foul number four on him. So now two Storm players on four fouls. We got uh, just under five and a half minutes here to go in the fourth quarter. Towers trail by three. Ron Aberglen with a timeout. Let's go down and take a listen. Yeah, yeah we got to go. We got to go man. All we're doing, all we're doing on the zone now is standing around hoping that it happens. Let's go man now and, and stay. Huh? No, we got to get it done with man. We got to get it done with man. Don't don't let him dribble drive. Don't let him dribble drive you. I don't even know who the hell got there. Yeah, you got Ray Button, uh, Miller if he's in there. Well, Jim, if uh, 
Bennett wants to go man to man there to prevent the dribble drive, but if we take a look at the uh, shooting by quarter here, one thing the Towers need to address is their own shooting. One for five here after a 31% third quarter. Yeah, and they didn't, you know, they didn't really open it up maybe in the third quarter like they should have done. Uh, you know, uh, I think that, uh, you know, they missed a lot of layups in, in that and, and, and buckets that should have hit. I think, uh, you know, maybe maybe the coach wants to get it done with the man-to-man -man and just make sure you don't let anybody get free because some pockets are opening up in the back of that zone now. They're getting some layups. Schultz got one, uh, Carl Miller got one, and they want to just tidy that up. His philosophy, I guess, if they're going to score, let them score over us individually. Danny Lewis trims the gap back to one. Towers led by as many as 10 when we saw them before Christmas. They had a 20 point lead, but still needed double overtime to win it. Do you fancy overtime here, Jim? Uh, I think it's going to be that type of tight game. I mean, uh, you know, let's, if we don't lose any uh, quality players down the stretch, I think uh, anything could happen. Bunton shot is way short. Rebound Johnson, he just hands over to Lewis. Bowman, round to Lewis. Lewis fakes the three from deep, hands over to Bowman, lines up the three. Oh, what a play by Johnson to oh. slam the towers back in front. With feeling. <laughs> Look at that, goes up and gets it. These guys are up tonight. Dolby Storm last year's runners-up in the Uniball Trophy, 60 the London Towers who were runners up the year before 63 battling here for a place in the semi-finals right here at the NEC on the 22nd of January we'll of course be covering those and we still have one more game to come here tonight Sheffield Newcastle in the final quarter final stone shot is short rebound for Martin Henlon Henlon throws it high Bowman did well to just tip it down to Johnson Johnson doesn't want it, hands it back to Bowman. Good hands by Evans to steal it, he'll run it back. Oh, and a slam for Darian Evans. We're seeing some dunks today. Good stuff. Again, that's what they do so well. Evans in particular, very good in open court, getting steals and finishing. He's, uh, they're coming to life now. It's put the Derby Storm back up by one. We're just over three and a half here to play in the fourth quarter. Bucknell lines up a three. Steve Bucknell always pulls On out cue. the big shot. I was just thinking it's Bucknell time right now, and uh, he came through just as I was thinking. Couldn't get it out, but certainly I was thinking that. Towers now back in front. Stone going strong. Gets his own rebound, has a word with the referee, wondering where the foul was. Yeah, he's got a bit of a case out there. Oh! Certainly was a foul on that one as Danny Lewis went after it. Ironic uh, applause from the Derby fans. Good penetration. This is why he's such a, such a tough matchup for Johnson and everyone who guards him, because he can handle the ball like a guard, you know. And uh, that athleticism, once he gets in there, he can make anything happen. Stone throws up a prayer as he barreled through the middle. It went out of bounds in the end off a Derby player. Bunton waving his teammates back, saying, come on, let's get on with this now. Let's get the job done at the defensive end. I think what Darby has to realize that now, with uh, less than three minutes left, the refs will let him play. And, uh, you know, none of those calls that you would normally probably get, soft calls we call them, is going to happen right now. Buckner under pressure, slapped away by Stone. Foul is called, and Martin Ford on the Darby sideline, very unhappy with that call. There he is, pacing the sideline, trying to have a word with referee Keith Bruce. Here's another look at it, Jim. Yeah, that was a foul. Mark Ford might have to sub himself in just to finish that conversation with the ref. <laughs> it's avoiding him. <laughs> Here's Lewis for the Towers. Lewis, back to Butner. Butner into Danny Lewis. Lewis goes up strong. Three Ooh. second violation called against Danny Lewis and the Derby Storm now with two and a half to play have a chance to tie him. Oh, oh my goodness. And the Towers are screaming it should have been their ball. The bench <laughs> went crazy 
Now the referees are going to chat it over. He's going to change it. And they do change yeah, it. It did that, look that was for justice. all intents and purposes that Ray Schultz just lost it off his own leg. Very important possession here because uh, if, if London scores, it's going to be really tough down the stretch. We're going to have to outplay him by four points so to get to the, the overtime. Munton going for the block fouls Danny Lewis. And and that's not who the person you want to foul. And what, what, what I would say to Bunton, because he's such a great shot blocker, just let Danny go up and go after the shot once he shoots it. You don't want to foul him. He does get him up, though, with the pump fake. Give Danny credit. Good head fake from Danny Lewis now will go to the line with the chance to make it a two-shot game with two minutes to play. Martin Ford just having a quick chat with his assistant coach Tim Lascelles. I think it's been nearly uh, over two minutes since someone's made, made a floor shot. A lot of points, uh, the points that are coming, there aren't many of them, from the foul line. That's right. And if you have a look at the free throw shooting, the interesting thing is not 61-82, but 23 taken towers, 11 taken dog. Oh, I, that's one of the contentions. Oh! Contention. Well, I thought Daniel Lewis was coming up with the steal, sorry there. Yeah, that's the bone of contention, I think, uh, Martin Ford is saying that, you know, let's, uh, fair enough, you're calling the fouls, but call some down here. And that, you know, that is a quite a big uh, gap between fouls. Dolby trail by four. Martin Ford with the timeout. Let's take a listen. Get your case and try to help the dumb man. Let's go. Come on, man, together. Hey, you got to start getting aggressive, both ends. Otherwise, I'll get out of there. Hey, let's go back to five. Go back to five. We've got to get all over him. Offensively, let's push the ball. Take it to the basket. Got to go now, man. We've got to go. This is it. Make a break. Four, Nicole, five. you don't pull your head out. I've got four guys on the bench here on one play. So you sort yourselves out right now. Hey, we talk about we want to win. We're going to see right now how much we want to win. We're going to see right now how much we got, how much balls we got, how much we want to win this game. Danny Lewis is going to try and take over this game. It's your job to shoot him down. We messing up ourselves, y'all. Yo, let's show some heart, baby. Let's go. Let's some heart. Help each other. Defense. One, two, three. Defense. Defense. Martin Ford saying it's all or nothing now. Both teams have had a lead here. The tower's just edging in front here, Jim, by four. This is the key moments. Who's got to step up now for, for either side? Well, I think, first of all, as a team, Derby's got to keep their composure and make sure that they're not uh, frustrated by the calls, the lack of calls, and just stay, you know, to their game. Charge call there. Even with that, there's not. There's a lot of time left, and the game could be won easily by either side. For, for London, I think it's going to be Steve Button. I think Button's got to step up as he is. I think he will do and take some of the, the pressure off of Danny Lewis right now. Watching on John Tresvant, who started the season with Derby, was a trophy finalist with them last year as well, was a losing quarter finalist earlier today with the uh, at London Leopards. The wily old veteran sitting over there. Great player. Trez uh, has connections with most clubs in the country, seems to have played for them all. Danny Lewis running around, Martin Ford said he's going to take over the game right here, and that's exactly what Lewis is, does with a huge and one play. I said, I said the button will take the pressure off of Lewis, he didn't need it, he just went in there nice and smart. I didn't even think he was going to take that shot, maybe milk the clock, but just shows his confidence. A jump hook right over top of Schultz, who's got at least five inches of height on him, and just knocks it down. Ray Schultz picks up foul number five there and goes to the bench. He has 15 points tonight, four boards as he goes uh, to sit down. I'll show you how crucial that foul is. He gets to the foul line, gives the guys a bit of a breather. He gets a bucket, but he also gets one of the three-point shooters off the court. And brings in Martin Ford back into the game. Who is not one of their premier three-point shooters. <laughs> Offensive foul once again, two in a row on Kip Stone. And that could be the difference, those two uh, offensive fouls. Danny Lewis has taken over the game on both ends of the court. Kids at home watching this. Not only offense wins it, look at the defense. Two charges Danny Lewis has drawn. Totally has got Dar Darby out of what they want to do. And that's the fifth foul on Kip Stone. He will go to the bench. Joel Bowman will come back in. Stone doesn't quite realize now he's going to the bench. 
surprised we haven't seen Bowman a little bit more as a shooter. Really hits uh, a lot of uh, open shots early against us uh, early uh, two weeks ago. I thought that he would be, when they went to the zone, I thought they'd use him a lot more. Good hands by Evans to knock it loose. He goes up and slams it back. Cuts it down to five. Bowman. The Derby fans screaming for an offensive foul there after seeing two in a row called on Kip Stone. Referee waved it on. They put pressure trying to get out of Lewis's hands. The Derby fans now booing for these closing seconds. Lewis. Lewis going stripped by Evans. Away comes Evans. Evans running it back. Can't go out of bounds. Don't forget, still to come after this game, the Sheffield Sharks and that man Craig Lynch's Newcastle Eagles coming up after this game, in which the Towers lead by five with 51 seconds to go. This game is not over. Uh, two crucial foul shots. If he can hit those, they're right in the game. Only the three-pointer to tie it. One, one shot basket, one shot uh, offense to win it. Ooh, Evans the though, the misses time. the uh, crucial free throw there. I jinxed him. Better you than me, Jim. He misses them both. Oh. Lewis with the rebound. And he's bumped out of bounds by Jarrell Bowman. No foul, says the referee. No it'll foul. Be, it'll be a Towers ball. Surely, if there's no foul, Lewis went out of bounds. And I haven't seen that call since I was playing, you know. It's, <laughs> come on. It's got to be a foul or, or something. 48 seconds to go. Danny Lewis and the London Towers lead here 71-66 as they search for a semi-final spot. Coach Ron Aberglen has called the Towers final timeout. Let's go down and take a listen to it. Marty, Marty, you're down inside. Donnie, you're setting a screen. Danny's got it on 30. I want, I want Buck over here. Now, Steve, you take it out. Steve, you take it out. And uh, uh, you, you get right here, Danny, and Barry right here. You act like you're coming off Barry there and come back and get the basketball. Now, I want you to get the ball. Yeah, you're over there. We're over there. You act like you're coming. You act like you're coming, and you go there. And Danny Lewis there just taking a drink there, Jim Brandon. That last play there, his Lewis and Bowman just bumping him out of bounds. Yeah, that was definitely a foul. But, you know, really looking at it, Darby, you know, was complaining about it should have been a foul, wanted to stop the clock, get them to shoot it. But with Danny Lewis, the way he's shooting foul shots, maybe is a good thing. Maybe they can force someone else who's not a good foul shot shooter to grab the ball and then foul him immediately. That would be as good of a, uh, an opportunity for them to, uh, to change things. Danny Lewis uh, wanders back onto court. Game's leading scorer with 26. Here's Bucknell to inbound for the Towers. Storm needing a quick foul, perhaps, or a steal. And they yeah. get the foul from Miller. Foul number five on Carl Miller. And he will now be forced to go to the bench. And Tim Lascelles will come in for him. Carl Miller netted a three in the opening uh, couple of minutes of the game. Eight points in total. Plays hard, Carl Miller. And he's the key to why Derby's gotten off to, uh, you know, a good start this season. You know, having good British players are very, very important. And, and Carl's one of the best in the business. So, uh, you know, I know they're very, very happy and very, very uh, pleased with the fact of having him on the roster. Bowman off the back of the ring, rebound Bunting. Darby needs to come back and find some scores in a hurry. Here's Ford to Evans. Evans to Bowman in the corner for three. Yes, Jarrell Bowman nets a three. It's a three-point oh. ball game. Evans looking for the steal, but he never got the ball inbounded. His reaction time is so quick. Uh, Evans gets his hands to so many balls. Here's Lewis. Lewis running the ball along the baseline, going past three. Danny Lewis to uh, Jarrell Bowman, back out to Bucknell Town, looking to tick time down and hang on here. Now Evans is forced to make the foul, and Barry Bowman 
will go to the foul line. He needs to make at least one. Bowman is a good three point, a free throw shooter so far this season. 89% from the line. Makes the first. He's 80% uh, so far tonight. Is that it? Can they still do it in 24 seconds, Jim? It's possible. I mean, uh, it would help a lot more if you had a Reggie Miller. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, it, it is possible, certainly. They certainly need a score in a hurry right yeah, they now. they do. They need a quick one and then a steal and then a, a score. Evans going strong. Does oh! It. oh, nearly slammed by Bunton. The tip from Evans. Johnson Great with the rebound. rebound. And surely that now is that for the London Towers. And they will face Thames Valley Tigers in the semi-finals of the Uniball Trophy. Bunton with three. Bunton with the steal. It's a four-point game anyway. Doesn't matter as that goes up and doesn't go in. Danny Lewis, 26 points. Shot the ball tremendously well. A great all-round game from Lewis. Without question, man of the match. Did it on the offensive end, defensive end. Played an unselfish game, but, but stepped up when the team needed him to show him leadership. So all credit to him. Donny Johnson, Martin Hanlon, both with double-doubles. Good performances from them. Great performance from the guys on the boards. They knew that Derby was very athletic on the boards. Everyone came, the guards come and rebound. They knew they had to clean up the, uh, the glass uh, for London to win the game. They did so. Bunton, though, for Derby, 18.6 blocks. Had a great game. Got to be one of the most dynamic and exciting players uh, that we've seen over here for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm going to get a copy of the replays and take them <laughs> home and watch them alone. <laughs> London Towers now then go on to face Thames Valley Tigers in the semi-final. They were both in the group. The Towers beat them twice, so whether that's an omen or not, we don't know. We'll have to wait and find out.